Hey guys, Nukem Finance here, and these are my personal three steps into building wealth. And you're probably wondering, why should I listen to this guy? He's in a t-shirt. I mean, look, there's trash on the floor right there. There's a can of Lysol. Look at that wall, it's painted a kid's color. I mean, why is the mountain orange right there? And, and, and look, look, I'm not even recycling that. I have some type of gaming chair. I'm just a guy in front of a camera telling you how to be successful and build wealth. Don't worry guys, I'll go ahead and uh, show you my whole portfolio, my current net worth, how much my house is worth, how much money I have in stock market, all my other investments and my liabilities. I'll share all that with you and you guys can decide uh, if I'm a person you wanna listen to or take some advice and try to incorporate in your current life. I mean, you guys probably have similar to this comment right here where it's another finance channel who had a disagreement in one of my opinion stock and says, why should people listen to you? You're not even a millionaire. Well, I honestly believe you don't need to be a millionaire to be considered wealthy. There's several YouTubers who are wealthy and other people out there who are wealthy and they, they're not millionaires. I mean, you don't need to be a, be a millionaire to be considered wealthy. If you go by a definition of wealth, where it talks about materialistic goods and you know it's all based on material, then I guess you can be considered wealthy. But personally, you could be so wealthy and rich but you can be very poor. And what I mean by being poor in terms of a millionaire is let's say you're, you have an unstable job, you're unhappy, emotionally not there, psychologically you're not thinking right, or you just happen to inherit a lot of money and you become a millionaire, does that mean you're wealthy if you don't know what to do with it? So my definition of being wealthy is be able to live comfortably where you can provide for yourself and you have about six months of reservation, for example, in this pandemic, uh, where you have to lose your job for six months. Are you able to cover your bills and not worry about it? So that's a sense of security. Your relationships are thriving. You're mentally there and you're living a happy life. So it's psychologically, emotionally, and material where those three combined is what I consider a wealthy person. Before I tell you my three personal steps to building wealth, I wanna share my whole portfolio so you know what my total net worth is and all my investments. Now this website called Personal Capital, there's several many different places like this. It tracks your finances, how much cash you have, so you connect your bank accounts, all of your stock trading accounts, your current mortgages or any loans you have and all your assets and it ranks them of how well you're doing, what you're spending your money on, your goals towards retirement, how much you need to make, how your current uh, stock portfolio is compared to the market portfolio so you can see if you're doing better than what the market is. So if you want to get this to track your finance and your growth, you can use my link below. I get $20, uh, it's up to you, you wanna use it. I appreciate if you do, uh, but there's several other places like this. I happen to use personal capital. So my total net worth is about $700,000. My assets is 1.271 million. My liability is 571,000, which is my current mortgage of my current home. And my cash is $181,000, which I'm gonna spend $120,000 in the next month because I just purchased a house uh, in Texas for investment property. I'm gonna make passive income for that. So that's another revenue source. And I'm refinancing my current house, which is 770,000. And I need to put $65,000 down in order to get a cheaper interest rate from 3.375 to 2.75 refinance. So that would save me $400 on my currently monthly mortgage. My investment is my stock portfolio. I have close to $300,000 in the stock market. You can see my credit cards right now I only owe $363 on my credit card. And my mortgage right there is 570,000, which is my major liability. And my other asset is my car and my house. So that's my current net worth and I'm planning to build on it and it, my whole philosophy may change as I get more experience in owning a property and more uh, have a better idea how the stock market works. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, our first step to building wealth and this is the most important one, I always constantly have to work on this step, uh, is positive mentality. Being poor is a choice. Let me say it again, being poor is a choice. You can be broke, you can have a lot of debt, but being poor is a choice. The definition of being poor is lack of sufficient money and materials, and you see yourself or the person who is poor as inferior to society. 
Now, when you have the mentality that you are poor, it's nearly impossible and very difficult to get out of that mentality and to fix any debt you have and you consider you can never get out of it and that you are stuck in that cycle of, I'm always poor. If you see yourself as someone inferior to most other people, then that is a terrible mindset and it's hard to get out of those situations in order to build wealth. So once you fix your mentality, you say, yes, I have a, I owe a lot of money, I have a lot of loans, I have a lot of debt, but I am going to do everything I can to get out of that situation, to be to build wealth, have my own home, and live comfortably. So once you get the right mindset, then you can uh, aggressively uh, change your life around. So I constantly have issue where I was like, oh man, look at all this money I lost in the market. Oh, I'm worried if this investment home's not going to do well. What if uh, I lose my job and that we run out of savings? Therefore, I'm going to be poor. I constantly have to have okay, I'm gonna do this. If this fails, I'm gonna have this backup plan. So there's always a constant backup plan. If something fails, I have some other ways to try to push towards building wealth. Step number two. Now this one is not officially mine. It's actually another YouTuber that gives a lot of financial advice and help a lot of people. Uh, it's David Ramsey's Baby Steps. Now he mainly focuses on property, mortgages, and debt. He's not too focused on stock market investment. He knows some of it, but not in great detail. So I'm gonna change some of it to make more sense towards me who likes to invest in stock market and like to invest in property to diversify. Over Overall, it's a good uh, step guidelines that I believe most people should follow and we'll go ahead and go through his baby steps if you're not familiar. So his baby step number one is save $1,000 as your starter emergency fund. Now the reason this is important is because even though $1,000 is a lot for a lot of people, especially when they're young or they're in a mountain debt, this is a reachable goal I believe most people can attain. It's just to have some money in your bank account, which is $1,000 in savings as your emergency fund in case you get fired, you lose your job, or some unexpected bills turn up where you can pay your rent or your mortgage. So that is a good start just to build that um, bar where it's not out of reach so people can get that right mindset in, in starting to build their wealth. Now, this was the most important one, I would say all of his baby steps is baby step number two, which is pay off all debt except house using the debt snowball. So before you can even invest in the stock market or property or any type of investment, it's almost impossible to do that when you have a mountain of debt on you. You need to clear all this debt besides your home uh, loan or your home mortgage is pay off your debt. Now you're probably wondering, which debt you should pay off. You, let's say you have a mortgage debt, you have a car loan debt, you have a student loan debt, you have a credit card debt. What should I focus on? Well, personally, I believe you should pay off credit card. The average credit card interest rate is 19.02%, which is extremely high. This is more than average student loan debt, which is 5.8, more than the average home loan right now, current market is 3.47. So that is over three times more than the average interest rate compared to all your other debt. So you have to tackle the most difficult one, which is your credit card. And it, it escalates, it becomes like a big snowball as it goes downhill, builds more and more momentum, get bigger, and it's almost impossible to climb or dodge out of the way. So pay off your credit cards. Several ways to pay off your credit card debt is start paying more of the current balance of your credit card so you slowly pay it off quicker. But keep in mind, the longer that you have credit card debt, the bigger the snowball is. So it's best to try to pay off all at once. And the best way after you pay off your credit card debt is always pay your current balance. Anytime you do the minimum payment, that's where the interest rate kicks in. When you pay off your whole current balance, therefore you can't get interest rate and you don't have to fall on credit card debt anymore. After you finish paying off your credit card debt, start on your student loan debt, your car loan debt, or any other loans uh, that's not related to your mortgage. Now moving on to his third baby step, it's basically a building block from baby step number one is save three to six months of expenses in a fully funded emergency fund. So it's basically building more of that security blanket in case you lose your job or any unexpected expense comes up until you find a new job or a new source of income to keep uh, your emergency going and your wealth. So that's a good one right there. His baby step number four, I think is a little bit premature. So I'm gonna insert my own is baby step number 3.5 or three and a half, which is purchase a home property. Now, if you're currently renting, you're basically paying for someone else's mortgage 
and you're not building any equity in having your own wealth or your assets, you're paying someone else's assets. Now, when you purchase a home, make sure it's within your means. Don't try to get too much house. It's rather to good, better to start in a smaller house uh, than going for a big house all at once. You don't want to be house poor. And keep in mind, you need to pay about 20% of the house down. And then you need to factor in about ten to $12,000 in cl closing costs and what you offer. So 20% down plus another ten to 12,000 to close on that house. And, uh, and then you start building your equity and actually having assets. Okay, with that being said, baby step number four is invest 15% of your household income in retirement. This is a good one. I think everyone should build a retirement so you don't so you still have other security blanket to give you money when you're no longer working. 15% is pretty good. So this means always contribute max to your 401k, have a Roth IRA. For me, I have a SEP IRA, which is essentially another IRA. Any of those are good choices in retirement. So 15% of your whole household income, that means your partner and yourself, 15% of it goes into your retirement fund and which is basically in the stock market and the stock market generally goes up over time. So your money grows and grows exponentially in compounds with each other. David Ramsey baby step number five is save for your children's college fund. Now this one is a mixed one for me. I do agree with it in general. If you're planning to have kids or have kids already, you do want to save for their college funds. But more and more as time goes on, college seems a little bit unnecessary to me since there's so many jobs on online that you could do. Now, if you want to be Instagram model or a YouTuber, it's very difficult. So I think you should try to aim towards college. Uh, for me, I did go through college, but then I found success on YouTube where it's been my full-time job for the past eight years and that's where I am today. But it depends on what is your goals and ambition for your kids. Now, legally, if you're in the United States, you don't have to pay for your kid's college fund. You just have to um, take care of them until they're 18 and they have to get college loans themselves. But most parents want to be responsible and good parents and have a college fund. So after you have your retirement savings, the next is to work on your kid's college fund if you choose to. Now, baby step number six is one I really disagree with and this is why. His baby step number six is pay off your home early. And I think this is really dependent on your current situation. For example, if I followed his baby step number six for me, it won't be as beneficial for me to pay off my house early compared to investing in the stock market. For example, my current house will be refinanced at 2.75% and my investment property is 2.99%, which is under 3%. If I were to invest it into the stock market, it says right here, the S&P 500, which is the best 500 companies in the United States, and this is what a lot of people will follow in the stock market, it began in 1926 as a composite index which comprised of 90 stocks. According to historical records, the average annual return inception in 1926 through 2018 is approximately 10 to 11%. The average annual return since adopting the 500 best company, hence the S&P 500, through 1957 to 2018 is roughly 8%. So if I were to follow his baby step number six, I will probably miss around three to 5% in interest in my extra cash. Instead of putting in the stock market and putting in my house, I would lose about three to 5%. I did this by average uh, return is 8%. Minus 3% for my mortgage, which is 5%. And then let's say there's taxes. That's 1.85%. That's where it's around 3.5%. And depending on the stock given year, it could go up higher or lower. So that's why 3 to 5%. And what I could miss in interest on my money that's spare instead of putting in my house, which doesn't work for me when I put it in the market. It compounds, meaning... Uh, any dividends I get from the stock market goes back into stock and buys more of that stock and more of that stock and that money grows exponentially compared to my house where it just sits there. So I personally believe it's on, depending on your situation. If you're younger like me, I'm in my early 30s. I don't need my house to be paid off early. But let's just say I was older, closer to retirement, then yes, I would pay off my house early so I don't have to worry about the debt and just receive from my retirement funds that I built earlier and my passive investment that goes straight to me and I only have to worry about my utilities and property taxes and that's better for retirement. So if you're older, closer to retirement, then yes, I would recommend paying off your house and investing in the stock market. You can't handle the volatility of the stock market and if having debt causes you more emotional pain and mental pain, 
uh, then you should probably pay off that debt. But if you can stomach it like me and you're younger, then I would invest it in the stock market. And his baby step number seven is pretty good. And it's the one that I want all of us to achieve is build wealth and give to charity. So this is good once you, you know, you're wealthy, uh, you just want to spread your knowledge of how you got to where you are and spread it among the community, your family, and giving uh, as a way, as a gratitude, just, you know, being alive and being able where you are. I honestly believe in uh, paying it forward. And my step number three, I know we just got through David Ramsey baby steps, all of his seven baby steps, but uh, those was just one of my steps to follow, is diversify your passive income where you have income coming from several different revenue sources. It could be a passive online business. For me, it's creating these YouTube videos and all those passive videos, I generate passive income. Uh, it could be in the stock market investing where you make smart stock market investing and gives you about eight to 10% a year, depending on the given year. Uh, you can have real estate property own, uh, investment homes where you get rent. So let's say the stock market goes down, you still have money from rent. If the stock market is up, and your housing's down, then you have money from your passive income from the stock market. So it's diversifying your passive income and building passive wealth. It's not where you have to go actively put in hard labor and work to get money. It's just where whatever you're currently doing, you're still making money. So that's, and I wanna give you guys a fourth bonus one. It's not really a step, is how to build your credit. You need good credit in order to get good rates on loans. Uh, home loans, auto loans, business loans, uh, is highly depending on your credit score history and you need good credit. So I made a YouTube video of how to build good credit. I'll put a link at the end of this video and in the description, how to build or fix your credit quickly. It involves credit cards and having good loans. Yes, there's such things called good loans uh, where paying off loans shows you that you have uh, more worthiness and liability to a credit bureau that you can pay off any debt. And the lower you pay off that debt, or get the debt lower, the higher your credit scores goes. And what you can do is have different banks, lenders, companies compete against each other to give you a better rate. Uh, you say, hey, I have this quote for this much money, take it to another bank or lender, it says, what can you do? They'll usually reduce the rate and possibly give you credit, making it cheaper to work with them, costing less more money. So since I have, my current credit score is, Oh, uh, used to be in the 800s uh, since I just took out a loan and had a credit report, it went down a little bit. It's in the highs where anything above 4, 740 is considered the best credit uh, that they can, uh, interest rate they can give you. So those are my four personal uh, ways to build wealth. Let me know what you guys think. Which step are you guys on? If Where you guys are in your life? Let me know if this was helpful. If you want to see more videos like that, I appreciate all those who gave a thumbs up hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys next time.